need to get these water spots off my lens. Ow! Bending the right arm. Still hurts. There we go. Those are lens wipes. I know. Maybe for a second thought, condoms. Nope. Lens wipes, not very good ones either. The doctor told me I can start to do arm exercises. It hurts. It's so hard to stretch my right arm to extend it because I didn't use it for a couple months. So that's great news. I can move my body again. And look at this. I don't think I ever showed it. This was, this area was covered with all the bandaging materials. And now look, there's just, just a little bit of stuff over there. Getting better, lots of progress. Would you focus? Why won't you behave? Oh, very good news from the doctor. Some more cleaning to do, but you know, the whole one arm thing. See, just have the Vaseline, the tape, and the pad. But I don't have to dress my leg anymore. The doctor said it's okay to stop doing that as long as I'm comfortable, which is great because it's one less thing I have to do. The bandage situation was taking up to an hour and 40 minutes a night. That's a long time, it's too much. This, much more manageable. It's like 15 minutes, if even. All right, but what do you do? Do you want to go outdoors? Is that what's going on? That's usually what's happening. You're gonna chase me until I take you outside? That sounds like a good idea. It's a nice day, let's go outdoors. It is a beautiful day. Why are the lights on over here? Those are set to a timer. I don't know what's going on there. All the power and everything went out. Oh, I didn't say hello, did I? Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Uh, a lot going on this morning, if you can't tell. A little scatterbrained. Had some storms last night. Had to reset all the breakers, everything was tripped. I mean storms, like bad, bad storms. Like the entire backyard flooded kind of storms. You can see where things flooded through here. It's is a lot. Like to the point, never seen this happen before, to the point where the water was like bubbling out of the skimmers. And then I'm thinking over the edge of the pool, and it was like 1 a.m. So I didn't see this part of it but from what i can tell it looks like there is some washout from here but not a ton but that drain in there's clogged i've talked about this before this is all drainage that water doesn't settle up against the side of the house i guess i have to kind of go from the beginning here to talk about that you can see there's like look there's pieces of christmas cactus over here on the ground you see my or Thanksgiving cactus, the Shombajera, right there and right there. And that plant, that's that's all the way over here. Yeah, it's over here in the shade. Oh, camera strap getting in the way. I don't understand how that even happened. This whole, it's just disgusting. That drain is clogged up. I need to get one of, they make like straps for your camera that you can just put around your wrist. The dangly one's not working very well. Uh, yeah, so things flooded down here, flooded from over here. All these houses up here and my neighbor's house drain into my yard. And I have a, like a sewer thing back here. A few months ago, one of my neighbors tapped into it, put all their like gutters and everything, which is okay. I think it might've been too much. Like maybe this drain can no longer handle everything because this entire area, like you, there's a line that I can't really see on camera. Well, you kind of can see that up there on the hill. So that's probably about where the water was, which lines up to the back of this berm right around where it looks like it must have washed over the berm. See, this berm here, it's not just for privacy, it's also function to help keep things from flooding over onto the patio. And there's just, look at that, you can see how the grass is all washed through here. The berm over here is all knocked down. And this is that other end of it where it looks like, where I was just showing you in the yard, it must have come through, washed over the front of all this and come down here and just gone right into the pool. So the pool's been drained down. It was all the way up to the rim before. Earlier this morning, you can see where like the water was settled against the grout and some grout is washed out. I don't know if you can see it, but that's bad because the water can get behind there and lift the liner up. I don't think that's going to be a problem, but that needs to get fixed by someone else, not me. I don't know how to do it. So this is what I'm up to this morning. Just trying to figure out what the heck to do about <laughs> All this, I can't clean, I can't get anywhere near that. I'm so full of holes and wounds and scars and things, but it, it'll clear up. It's just, it's going to take a while. This is bad. I've never seen it this bad before. But anyway, see how it keeps going through here? All of this probably came from that other end. Comes all the way through here, back down over here, over here through this side. You can kind of see where things wedged up right here. And then um, that pool box, <laughs> you see that? Yeah, that's supposed to be over there. Even looks like the hot tub moved a little bit. And that thing is heavy. 
So there, this had to have just been absolutely full of water. So there's a storm sewer down here, and that's what all these different drains I've been showing you, all of them are plumbed underground and go to that sewer. So I think it, it, was, it was, is too much. It's what it is. It's, it's okay. I think they said it was like three and a half, four inches of rain in like an hour and a half. It's basically a tropical storm. But bright side, don't need to water today, so that's good. So, aside from the flooding, which I can't really do much about other than let things dry out and do some cleaning and tidying on the patio, I still have a whole bunch of annuals here left that need to get potted up. And, uh, you know, if, if you've been watching the channel, you know what's going on. They're not looking good, because they were purchased back in, like, March, and they're still in their nursery can. So, they, um, some of them are on their last leg, but I figure may as well try to get them potted up, and I'm just gonna stuff them into containers. Originally, you know, I had planters and things planned for the yard and for the channel, and then all the stuff happened. I can't lift heavy pots and the bags of the soil and all those things, so I'm just gonna start sticking them around other plants that are like waist height so I don't have to bend down because it's still kind of uncomfortable to do that. I have some hanging baskets over here that normally go on my front porch. I had decided I wasn't going to do the baskets this year, but may as well because I have the plants. I don't know if I'll have enough to make them totally symmetrical, but why not? I'll go ahead and do them. I wasn't going to because it's like there's a pandemic going on and no one's coming over so it was like I don't really care that much about my front porch. I didn't want to spend the money to do those but now I have these. So yeah there's a bunch of coleus in here, some sweet potato vines and some very very sad looking petunias. Is it just I don't know. It's just gonna be a week of planting stuff and who knows what else. Maybe we'll get to see how much the pool clears up over the next few days. It's pretty that's pretty gross. I'm definitely not letting the dogs in there anytime soon. Do you hear that? Jackhammers. It's been going all morning. It's the next day. Those started yesterday and then it was just too hot and sticky. Still doing the whole thing where I stay inside if it's gross outside. So I'm gonna get going on the hanging baskets first. That just seems like the smart thing to do, right? Because I have two of them, so that's the only thing that I need symmetry for, is I need to have enough plants for the two baskets look the same. But everything else can be a little bit more relaxed. So what I'm going to do here is I have three of these dwarf marguerite sweet potato vines, and then I have over here just one of these just random, I don't know what, sweet potato vines. So they won't be completely symmetrical, but they'll be close enough. It'll be fine. I mean, it's, it's whatever. And then in the gorilla cart, <laughs> these petunias, they do not look good, but is what it is. They'll look better <laughs> once they get planted. I have some of these Vista snowdrifts. <laughs> Beautiful, right? Do I have four though? I don't know. I have four of them. There's a bubblegum. There's a silverberry. A Vista fuchsia. A Vista paradise. Uh-oh. Okay, and then a bubblegum and another silverberry. I really, for some reason, thought that I had four of these. Oh, there's another one back there. And I see another one over there. I found three of the snowdrifts and then a silverberry that's just hanging on for dear life. They're close enough. It's fine. And then I'm going to fill in the middle with some double impatience and some... Uh, Diamond Frost Euphorbia. I think that'll look nice. Oh, that's nice. Now, in addition to jackhammering, there's also two leaf blowers going. It's gonna get really hot in like an hour, so just going with it. Here's a double impatience. This is a Rocopoco Coral Reef, I think is what... The noise. There's so much noise. I'm just gonna pop these up and come back. Well, I'd say it's gonna look better once it's hanging up, but it, that, that would be a lie. Working with what I got, I think I should probably give some of these petunias a cutback though. I might give them just like three or four days with some heavy watering first, just so it's not like too much at one time. And uh, they will hopefully flush back out from the top because they give me a look. Look at them. Very sad petunias. But I managed to put an awful lot in these. They're not gonna be in these for very long. You know, there's only, you know, two months, maybe two and a half months until we have frost. So uh, there's a couple of diamond frost euphorbias, the Rocopoco 
double impatient right there and there are some orange creamy orange colored regular impatience down at the bottom the dwarf marguerite sweet potato vines on each end and then a supertunia vista snowdrift on each side oh and i tossed in some coal it's just because i had it so i was like well i'll go ahead and use it but otherwise that's <laughs> so pretty yeah, no, not so much. Right, so now I'm just gonna pop the other one up. We'll take them to the front porch. That might be a better angle to show these anyways. Not that they're not like the most beautiful things to look at. Oh, but I did, I found another snow drift. I knew I had four of them. I was like, why is there only three? It was just hiding. I'll finish these up. We'll go look at them on the front porch. Oh, these look so good. <laughs> nah, someday and then, you know, several weeks they'll look better like i said i'm going to give the petunias just a few days to adjust and i'll give them a cut back so that they'll flush back out the impatience they'll have to spend some time you know you know the drill that's the theme of this video and my last video where i planted things these will also end up on drip but for now i just went ahead and watered them in very very heavily because it is it's, it's getting hot and i have another area i need to plant up before the sun gets too intense so that's all i have to do for now and <laughs> Ugh. We'll see how they look at the end of the month. Okay, and next thing on my agenda is handling this bowl. I've talked about this bowl many times, and it's just been one of those things where I just haven't gotten around to getting it planted up. I have a whole bunch of lava stone and stuff like that that needs to be placed more strategically, but for now, I'm just focused on getting the plants into the planters and then can, I can work on like fine details and stuff like that, probably in a different video. I initially had these drip lines here just under the mulch and then I lifted them up because I'm going to have to tap into these drip to get this bowl watered and uh, well, I'm not gonna be able to get to them if they're buried. Anyway, so I went ahead and got some soil in here. Hopefully it will be enough might be a little bit low if I decide to do a trailer in here, but I haven't really decided for sure if I want to do a trailer in here. Just because it's such a shallow bowl that I think that a trailer would get kind of lost and might be unnecessary. However, I do need to shut up and start planting because once the sun, see where the sun is? Once that comes over here, it is so hot over here. It's it's horrible. It's not a fun place to be. So I'm actually probably going to zoom through this planter very quickly. And look at how thirsty. I just watered them. Such babies. No, I have this heliconia that I pulled from a different planter. I want this in the middle. And then I'm going to put some sun impatience around it and uh, maybe some lemon coral sedum. If I have it, I think I do. I don't know. We'll see. Well, turns out I only have one lemon coral sedum. So change things up just a little bit by just I only did one. I wanted this entire bowl to be surrounded with lemon coral sedum, and uh, I ideally was just going to have one heliconia in the very front or a pink sunburst canna, but working with what I got here. So if there's lemon coral sedum, some <laughs> very wonky looking sun patients, these will fill back out on their own and straighten themselves out. That heliconia metal got a little weird, so I need to put some stakes in there and straighten that back out because that is meant to be a centerpiece and they are supposed to have upright growth. See, but you can see how it's just wants to go sideways. So I'm gonna stake that up and then eventually this bowl will have like a ring of these beautiful sun and patience that it's just impossible to get the beauty of these to show on camera. The variety is called Compact Deep Rose and it's a very, uh, vibrant coral kind of but it just it doesn't show on camera but it'll be a good contrast to the lemon coral sedum that's in the front and then the orange of the heliconia right there i don't want to put anything in here that was too big because there's the tide giant in the back and that's going to come up that elephant here back there is going to come up and get much bigger and it would kind of look weird to have something big in front of something big so something short and squat makes the most sense if i can find more lemon coral sedum I'll fill the rest of that out, but hey, for now, that's all right. That'll do. Okay, and it's about 10.30 a.m. and like 92 degrees. Very humid, so time for me to go inside. Pick back up tomorrow. Oh, hello. Look at you. Sorry, I get very distracted by beautiful, shiny things. It's time to either go inside or sit by the fans. It's too hot. Not supposed to be sweating. This leaf, it's got to go every time I walk through here. Right in my face. Driving me crazy. All right, interrupting with the, not interrupting, picking back up. But with the phone because need the, the not the thing too humid for the other camera the lens just keeps fogging up 
But I got pretty much all those annuals planted up. What I didn't are over here. And then currently, here's what's going on over here. Remember, huge pine tree died last year from all the flooding. My brother-in-law came over and got it dug up. Had to use a jack and all kinds of things. I had nothing to do with it. Don't worry. I didn't touch it. It was hard for me. But I just, I was like, I'm going to stay inside and just have nothing to do with this. It's going to be too hard to watch. But you got the tree out, which is great. Also, it means I have to go to the nursery and pick out a tree. Oh. At the tree nursery. With people, so I may not be able to vlog this, but here's the nursery. This place has so many trees. I've already been here for a very long time. Just looking for like an arborvitae, preferably a green giant, but they're like kind of expensive. That's something on clearance for 95 bucks. And I like those. The others are like 600. That's too much. Oh my gosh. Look at. If only they weren't like $1,300 a piece. <laughs> So pretty and blue and just <laughs> perfect. Okay, you see, this is why you always gotta have plumber's tape around. There's plumber's tape on there. Things just happen and look, remember? 90 degrees, stuff doesn't flex. This is what I was talking about. There's no wiggle room with this stuff. What, hold on, say it again. What is it? <laughs> Nana, <laughs> Nana, Nana, Luda. Nana Luda. Oh, it's $375. These are, Paris? These, are, Paris. these are for fancy people. I'm telling you, this place has the coolest evergreens. I mean, look at, what the, what even are you? It's in its own tiny little box. You know, they have these, I assume these are shipped down from Oregon. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that tag. Can you see it? Can you see that? Really cool looking stuff. Right now I'm waiting to figure out um, delivery and installation prices because the stuff I like, really big. And I, I don't, I don't think it's going to be something that I uh, can do myself, or not things that could be done with just like one person. Might need like a team of people. It's a tree, you know. It's a big decision. They'll have a long time, so I've got to figure those things out. So again, I'm back at home. I know that the transition there to the nursery was pretty abrupt. I didn't even know that my brother-in-law was going to be coming over, so everything was very last minute. He just happened to have some free time, and offered to come over and help and get this great big stump out of the ground. So I don't really have a before shot other than you, get, you can see the hole. Might be a little bit easier to explain the situation from back here where you can sort of see a bigger gap in between these trees. Basically, right behind these queen palms, there used to be a large white pine. Last year we had some really, really bad storms and it basically uprooted the plant. Not a lot, just enough to cause the plant to decline, white pine decline to be exact saturated soils from just excessive rain and then the root disturbance. Uh, white pine decline usually sets in within a few days of damage and once it starts there's not much you can do about it if it's caused from root damage. If it's you know sometimes there are pathogens that can have something to do with it and there like might be treatments but in this situation last year there was nothing that could be done about it. It was in the vlog so any of you who've been around for a while may remember the big pine tree there turned orange, got it cut down. Now here we are a year later and got the stump out of the ground and can replant. I'm not going to put a new white pine there. That would be a terrible, terrible idea. Cause one, those white pines shouldn't be there period. So there's really only two different trees, maybe three that I've been thinking about. I'm probably gonna go with a green giant arborvitae, arborvata, however you wanna say it. They grow quickly, they're inexpensive and uh, evergreen. That's a big thing here. It needs to be evergreen and it shouldn't be something that's gonna get so big and huge that it doesn't fit up there like this Norway spruce, which is a gorgeous tree. And I love that Norway spruce. That's this tree right behind my finger. Beautiful evergreen tree, especially in the winter time, but it comes out over that wall so far. And that tree's still got some growing to do. Norway spruces are great. They grow quickly. They're sturdy, tough spruces but it doesn't make sense for this wall for being planted up here it just it's too big it's way too big as far as the width goes someday if there's a bad storm which we have all the time i mean we just had one at the beginning of this vlog and it did some damage i'm going to point out in just a minute you might even be able to see it if you have a keen eye but it's if, if that were to get blown over then that's well it'll tear the wall out and you're looking at like probably fifteen thousand dollars worth of reconstruction and it would be very tricky too because with this, the pools in that wall was done before the pool was here it was all part of the same process and that it would be very difficult to get machinery back there now so the options green giant or borvitae or a columnar 
Norway spruce, which is similar to this one right here, but they're just like a skinny pole. They get like, I think anywhere from four to six feet wide and about 20 feet tall. The columnar blue spruces are pretty pricey because I want to get something big in there. I don't, not really in a place of like, oh, I'll plant something little and wait for it to grow. Nah, that's not my mentality right now. I want to fill that gap in right now. Now, I know it doesn't look like a big gap right at this moment because there's a lot of stuff going on. But in the winter time, none of these plants are sitting right here. The only reason those plants are even sitting there is because I was trying to create like uh, some sort of semblance, resemblance of privacy there. And uh, it doesn't matter that much now because I can't swim, may not be able to this year. I, I'm able to swim. I know how to swim. I love to swim. I, like I feel so at ease. That's not the point. Uh, you know, big hole in my back. I'm still healing, so I can't get in the pool. Don't know if I'll even be able to this year. But at some point, I want this gap closed because it looks right up into the neighbor's house, which you can't tell right now because there's leaves on the trees and everything. But like our windows down here, we're at the bottom of a hill. So there's all these houses up top here. And it's like we're on a stage during the winter time when there aren't leaves on the neighbor's trees. And it's like everybody's windows just... I don't like it. I like privacy. So it needs to be something that's going to grow quickly. So green giant or boar vitae. Columnar blue or not blue spruce. Columnar Norway spruce. Those are very expensive though. And or even I would love to put a magnolia there. A Bracken's brown beauty. But those also get pretty big and girthy. And this is a colder spot in the yard. So I think it would be a bad idea. There would be a lot of risk of wind damage and stuff like that during the winter time and then having a lot of bare spots in it and that would completely defeat the point of having something there for privacy. So that's why I was at the nursery looking at the plants. The nursery I was at that I showed you a little glimpse of, I have a different video on that nursery and I'll post it at the end of this video. They have tons of trees, beautiful, gigantic, gorgeous trees. And uh, I didn't have a lot of time to vlog while I was there, but there's just a, a little bit of footage. But you can watch that video if you want to see that nursery more in depth, you want a better look at it, because that it's a fantastic place. Tons of plants. A little bit pricey though. I originally went there because they had a sale that apparently just ended on some, they called them B-grade Green Giant or Borvites. And they were, you could get, I think it was up to 10 or 11 foot for 110 bucks, which is a great deal. They didn't have any of those left. And then after looking at the ones they had, their root balls were so big. If these massive root balls, you'd have to pay someone to have to pay them to bring it over, plant it and everything. And by the time everything's said and done, one, the big arborvitae's app were like 425, which is really pricey because they were only like nine foot. So that's very expensive for a nine foot green giant arborvitae. And then uh, you're looking at like, I think it was a hundred and something for delivery. That's to like just to take it off the truck and set it on the ground. If you want it planted, then that's 60% of the cost of the plant. Way too expensive. And then the columnar blue, I keep on saying blue spruces, the columnar Norway spruces were much more expensive. They were big and beautiful, but too expensive. And I don't want to go with the blue spruce. There's the blue spruce viruses and diseases and stuff like that. I'd, and I'm just, I want something that I, basically I want something cheap. So I'm probably gonna go with the green giant, but not from that nursery. There's another nursery right down the street that has them same size, a smaller root ball. So it'll be something that we can actually get planted on our own. Not me, I can't do it, but I can have my brother-in-law, some friends, something like that, lift it up the wall and get it planted for, I think it was like 225. That's a much better deal. So that's what's going on there. That's the catch up. Now, remember just a minute ago, remember what I was saying about how the white pine decline and bad storms and it can just kill the pines. Yeah, can you tell from here? It's like another one's about to bite the dust. And there's kind of a better look. You can see how those pine needles are pretty wilty, turning kind of a rusty orange color that just started yesterday, which was about four days after that bad storm. And I noticed the morning after that storm that this tree was leaning a little bit. And that's all it takes. Just a little bit of uprooting, a little bit of damage there and Bye bye pine tree. It's a white pine. They're native here. It's not something I'm, I'm heartbroken over. When this pine over here that I'm working getting replaced right now, when that one died, I was very upset because it was a big part of privacy back here. This one, it honestly doesn't, it really doesn't fit in here anyways. The Norway over here has grown so much and then there's another white pine right there that if that's gone, it's not that big of a deal. It's always sad to lose a tree just for, you know, the sake of nature, right? I'm going to be replanting something over there. And these two are pretty close. These two, 
that bind that spruce. They're pretty close to growing together. So not the end of the world. It's going to be a pain getting it cut down. That's for sure. I'm going to have to move all these plants and everything, but it's not looking good. <laughs> you know, because we had close to four inches of rain, three and a half, four inches of rain. And like, I think it was an hour and a half. And uh, the wind was incredibly strong. The house was rattling for like 30 minutes. It was fun. I like a good thunderstorm, but that was a bit, bit over the top, a bit extreme and not great for the pine trees. Whew. Okay, so now everybody is up to date with that abrupt change from planting things to what's going on over there. So hopefully sometime next week, there will be a, a green giant or borvite over there. That's the plan anyways. Never know what's going to happen, but that would be very nice. Because I had a whole entire plan for gardening that area, landscaping that area, but it was all relying on getting something planted up there first. So once that's up there, I can get going on that. It's a very dry spot, and I want to put a bunch of Asclepius up there. The uh, tuberous variety, they say smaller, they have orange flowers. And uh, I'm, I'm tempted actually to go head up a nursery right now just to try and get a hold of some while they still have them. The nurseries are clearing out a lot of their perennials and things like that to make room for the mums and those sorts of things and i'm good enough to drive now but i haven't driven since june 3rd or 4th so uh, i but i i can i think you know i mean it would suck if i got in like an accident or something and then like all my new skin gets torn up but i think it would suck if you got an accident period right I don't know. I'm actually, I'm going to take a day to think about that because I have another follow-up and I will talk to the doctors more about that just to be safe. But yeah, I think that a green giant arborvitae would be just fine in this gap here. And I know it doesn't look like a huge gap. It actually, it is, there's a lot of space. It's just, it's harder to tell because of all the things right here. But it actually is a pretty big gap. This Norway is going to keep reaching out some from here, but not a ton more. It has some more height to put on, but it shouldn't get that much more thick. Over the next few years, it'll start to thin out. But the other thing with the columnar Norway spruce that I had mentioned, the cost getting it installed and everything is going to be like around $1,000. And I just have a feeling that over time, as that were to grow and this one were to grow, I think they would kind of blend in together. And I don't think it would even stand out that it was a columnar spruce thousand dollars that's a lot of money especially for something that i think would end up just disappearing into the landscape i mean if that's what i wanted then i guess that would be great but i wouldn't mind having some contrast there and the green giant arborvitaes they look nice i don't mind them i think you know it's a fine looking plant like i don't think there's anything spectacular about them but i think they're pretty the only thing i really don't like about them is in the winter time they get like a bronzy tinge to their foliage instead of saying like a nice vibrant green kind of like a spruce would but 225 versus a thousand and then that thousand dollar plant may end up just like becoming invisible eh, I, think I'm the, I think the green giant's the way to grow and it's going to grow a little bit faster too the spruces those grow pretty quickly not as fast as the green giants do though okay did we defog yet yes okay new day very humid there's one more thing i really wanted to get done I need to grab my bucket i've got my little trowel here very very old i've had this since i was like i don't even know i was probably like 12 years old very old and rusted but still works well it has that straighted edge i appreciate it i like it and it by the way something stinks out here i have no idea what it is it smells like sewage and I don't, it, maybe it's from all the flooding that happened, like that storm story I showed at the beginning of the video, but it just smells like butt out here, and I'm not feeling it. Not feeling it at all. It's very stinky. Oh, you know what? It's probably the fly traps. I bet that's what it is. It's probably those fly traps. Need to change those. Okay, and I think what I'm about to do might be upsetting to some people, but it's just, it's got to get done. I need to do, what am I doing? I just spent 40 minutes waiting for my lens to defog. No, incredibly humid today to go to the front yard. I would have been so annoyed with myself if I had stepped into that house and then fogged this lens back up just for a shortcut. That would not have been smart. Go into the front. Hey, here's the succulent garden. Yeah, I mean, clearly a space I haven't been tending to. The succulents, they're on their own this year. I have not had time for finicky plants that need lots of attention. This hasn't been the year for it. <laughs> Look at my front. 
yeah i didn't do anything out here this year there's what's the point but you know did a few things on the front porch while the baskets look so much oh no i forgot to put the drips in them that was the whole point of putting them out here uh oh they're still moist you know what it's okay it's rained like every single day this week i love how these windmill palm planters have done the uh what are they the double impatience great combination the orange the pink you can kind of still see some of the purple poking through back there but it's just the um it's the sweet potato vine situation it's it's just a bit much not even a bit much like this is this is ridiculous now someone did make a good point that they haven't choked things out which is kind of true they sort of choked out the petunias in the other pot but it just this doesn't look nice i don't really care for how this looks i think it looks quite sloppy and i mean there are things out here that need fixing up but this just it's too much it looks like the my front porch is being eaten alive yeah, and these are potted up in these nice looking urns i mean they're nothing spectacular but i think they're pretty there's just no way to tell because they're totally hidden by these vines so i'm thinking i'm going to take these out it is something i've been kind of torn on like as i'm about to like i was ready to do this i was walking back here and i'm like no these are gonna go but then i look at them and i'm like i don't hate it i've grown so well i hate to tear them out but this is that looks ridiculous but i like it but it's not for the front yard in the backyard i'd be totally down with this for the front i try and keep things more clean and tidy so um they're going to come out i'm not entirely certain what my plan was by using the spade just because it's not like i'm going to be able to get that in here anyways we need to untangle these double impatience because they are in there and they break very, very easily. Just kind of like a tuberous begonia would. And then I'm going to try and get in here and see if I can pull these out. The thing is, <sighs> crap, these sweet potato vines, it's a potato. There's a gigantic tuber in there. Oh no. I go in here and try and pull those out. That's gonna be a disaster. It's gonna rip up the entire planter. Well now, I'm really torn because there's not a ton of growing season left to recoup things if they get torn up and i'm really liking how these impatience are looking up there and like i mentioned the double impatience a little bit fragile a little bit more finicky well i think i'll just i'll go very slow we'll see what happens that's the only way to do it look at this i mean it goes all the way back <laughs> it goes all the way back behind this planter there it's an excellent contrast i think that's the perfect shade of green with all of this but that's just yeah, like I said, it's too much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know it doesn't have the same impact, but it just, this will, I think, already looks a lot better. I mean, look at all this stuff that was getting trapped down there on the ground. It was just too messy. So I went ahead, pulled the potato vines out, threw some creeping jenny in here. There's creeping jennies that I had laying around, so they have some roots on them because they were spreading across the ground, and I went ahead and I just yanked them up and threw them in here. They should be okay. There's drip in there. I increase the amount of time on my drip. Sometimes with drip, if it's not running long enough, you get really shallow root development. Let me show you what I mean. Look at this great big sweet potato vine. Also, I cut a branch off the windmill palm because it was in front of the doorbell. I had just said there's probably going to be like a great big tuber down there, right? Um, well, <laughs> not so much. I mean, it could have been down there and I just couldn't find it, but the other one came up just like this one so and you know they some of these hybrids and things like that aren't always going to develop these great big massive tubers that happens sometimes but still <laughs> there should have been more than this to get out of those pots i'm thankful that there wasn't because it made it a lot easier to get them up uh, and there's potentially something much further down deep in the soil that it just totally ripped out of <laughs> maybe i don't know so with these i'm actually i'm gonna just i'm just gonna plop these in front of this i think this is called like prince purple i don't remember what it's called it's a fountain grass i'm gonna plop these in front of there because there's a drip over here so it'll have that nice green in front of the grasses there and will look like i put forth like a teeny bit of effort into the front yard <laughs> i mean look at look at that that's nothing that's terrible man there's so much cleanup still left to do from that storm like there's just mud everywhere from where the rain and everything was flooding and then this where the flooding was happening and then the splatter like i keep finding new things it's just messy out here that's no big deal it's just mess easy to manage oh yeah maybe not as big and dramatic but i just i think that this is better and i would like for those wave petunias that are over here to have a chance 
they they really weren't getting much of a chance with that giant sweet potato vine next to them so this is i know there are going to be people who are bummed about this i too am a sweet potato vine lover but it's a love-hate relationship and i'm just trying to distance myself from the dysfunction that is me and sweet potato vines they just really need to be in very large containers <laughs> even the dwarf variety still needs a very big container okay once again distracted by the clouds look at the sky problem with me noticing big clouds is i'm always like all right i have to stop filming so i can film a time lapse so i reset my drip to run uh, two minutes longer that's going to make a difference in case there was a root issue there uh and i need to they make like little sensors you can get for your drip emitters i hear tucker it's difficult for you tuck is he in there there he is hey tuck Hey, Tucker, I'm sorry. I know, you're afraid of the slippery floor. You can do it. I see you run across this floor all the time. Do you want to come out here? You want to come out? You're not going to come. Okay. All right, you're being dramatic. I see you run across that floor all the time. You can do it. Come on, you can do it. The floor's not really lava. Toby? All right, you're free. You can come out. Really? All right, I'll let you out in the backyard. Just a minute. Toby, don't pee on those yet. I haven't planted them. Actually, Toby, why don't you go inside? Show everybody what a good dog you are. There you go. Good boy, Toby. Yeah, you such a good boy. Oh, boy. You such a good boy. I'll meet you out back. Just a minute. Anyways, as I was saying, actually, I don't know what I was saying. I increased the time on the drip, and I want to get a sensor to put on my timer so that when it rains, it won't run because it's just... It's been raining a lot, which is great. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. You know, there's droughts and all kinds of things going on, so I'm not going to complain about the rain, but I also don't want to overwater the plants. Yeah, I know. There's probably plenty of viewers who are thinking, why did I take something that wasn't broken and fix it? But in my opinion, for my house, it was broken. It just looked too messy. So this will look better. <laughs> the theme with everything I planted in this video, which is going to need a few weeks. It's fine. All right, I'll let the dog out. Tucker, you coming? Want to go outdoors? Am I not exciting when I'm not in the front yard? Apparently so. He was only excited to see me because I was standing outside the front door. I can understand that, something new and exciting. It's like, what's my human doing out front? You never go out there. This area is doing really well and kind of also beginning to be a bit much, but it's fine. The backyard? things can be over the top the front yard eh, I like to keep things a little bit more structured I think that's where I have to stop because it's looking like it's going to rain this sky is so pretty but some of these clouds are really dark thanks for hanging out while I <laughs> threw together planters with really sad plants and got to do some tree shopping and I think there's going to be a lot more going on with that next week I don't know I can't predict the future but Hopefully that will be the case. I'm gonna try and get out to a nursery or two to get the plants to put, and I should point at what I'm talking about, with uh, whatever I choose to plant over here. The, there's really only two options. It's gonna be the spruce or the arborvitae. The nurseries don't have a ton left this time of year, and uh, that's fine. So like I said, I wanna go cheap. And the arborvitae, the green giant, that's pretty much, I think, the best solution for that as far as something that's cheap and will grow fast. That's the way to go. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some plants to put in front of that for when it's done and planted up and it'll take you all along with me. It'll be fun. I haven't driven in a long time and I'm really excited about it. Like, really excited. I cannot wait to get in the car and drive around. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. You know the drill. Social media is down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. And then all the YouTube stuff makes a big difference for the channel and I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to driving next week. Hopefully going to some nurseries. Not many, because, you know, pandemic. Be careful, and hopefully there'll still be some plants left. Who knows? I don't care. I'm just excited to drive the car. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye. No, oh, hold on. Can't go yet. I know. People are going to get bummed if there wasn't any pumpkin time. Pumpkin, say hi. I mean, say goodbye. Say hi or goodbye. I'm sorry, I woke you up. No, you only get like 23 hours of sleep a day. Such a sweetheart. All right, there you go, pumpkin time. Not much, but a little bit. Oh, thanks, pumpkin, you're so sweet. Oh, you just want me to scratch your eyes? Okay. All right, time for some eye love. Okay. Now we can go. You got your pumpkin dose.